Hi. I wanted to create um, an easel card that you could paper piece and I have literally just this second realised there's a little heart missing on one of the pink hearts but never mind because we'll show you how to make the complete project. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is design the shape first of all. So all this is a designed file so it can be a mask, it can be a stencil, it can you know all sorts of different things but I wanted to do it as a paper piecing project because then I can teach you a bit more stuff. So let's get started with this and we're going to work with kind of four basic shapes. Let me just clear down everything on my laptop because it keeps giving me all these pop-up things and every time I clear it down it pops more up. Like I've got time to start reading that. Right, so step one, make sure that your pattern interval is set to one. So let's do that first of all, and mine is set to one, so make sure that yours is. So all I did was went into the little spanner, in here, pattern interval is one, and pattern interval is the distance that it sets the shapes on the mat, the distance between the shapes. So select shape BA, A129 from the basic shapes in the machine's memory. So let's find that first of all. And I love doing this. It's just lovely taking some shapes and making something completely different out of it. So that one, for example. Now that might not be a shape that you would use very often. It's probably more for quilters, but that is gonna be just be fabulous. So we're gonna resize that to 55 millimeters. And we're gonna set it on the mat. Then we're going to add another basic shape which is number 67, which is that one. I use that quite a bit, the heart. And we're going to resize that to 34 millimeters. Go down to 34. Okay. And we're going to set that on the mat. Then we're going to add a circle. So add pattern basic shapes down to number 45 and we're going to resize that to 34 no oh, bear with let me just move this up and down and then i can see where i'm at because if i lose if i lose where i'm at we'll end up with all sorts of stuff but not what we want <laughs> so we want that to 40 millimeters like that and set that on the mat and then we want shape BAA103. So add pattern. We want 103. And this was just me sitting there one night on the sofa, nothing much on TV, watching, I don't know, something in the background. And thinking, oh, I'd like to design a stencil. And we're going to resize this one 250. So edit and resize 250. I thought, oh, let's just have a play around with some basic shapes. So we did, this is what we came up with. Right, so let me just come down here. Send all these shapes above into Canvas Workspace and Group. That's easy enough, so we're gonna press OK and we're gonna save it. And then we're gonna to go to Canvas Workspace. So new project, my projects, and there are my four shapes. So they're already selected. So it says to, where has my, there we are, edit and group and create a three millimeter inward offset line. Okay, so we're gonna to go to edit, offset, three millimeters, inward and okay. There we go. Now we're going to select everything now because we've got eight shapes. We're going to go to, that thing keeps dropping down. There we go. Edit and divide. And that's going to give us that extra shape in the middle of each of those pieces because it's punched it through. So this is the waste bit that it's left behind. That's what it's, that's what it's like in my head. Anyway, that's, that's how I make it make sense. So we're gonna get rid of those because we don't need those. And we don't need to group each one of these because it's one shape now. So you've got that one. So it's not, it doesn't see it now as two separate shapes. It sees it as one. 
There we go. So each one of those is now a frame. Once the extra layer left behind and moved, the shapes are moved. Oh, sorry, I've got all sorts of stuff popping up on here. Delete the extra layer that is left behind once the shapes are moved. Right, we've done that. Download the shapes and retrieve the file. Okay, let's do it. So just make sure that they are within that red area. There we go. And this one. And this one. And then we're going to download it. Okay, to our machine. Right, so I'm going to save the original ones anyway, because it's always worth saving them. Then you don't need to resize everything again. And then we're going to retrieve from the cloud. There we go. There's all our shapes. So multiple select everything on the mat and align them centrally vertically and centrally horizontally. So we're going to edit, multiple select everything on the mat, press OK and align them centrally vertically, centrally horizontally and press OK. So tap the screen and select the heart. So the way we know that it's a heart is it's a smaller shape. So that's the biggest and that's the smallest. And it says nudge the heart down three or six spaces using the directional arrow button. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, why do we need to nudge it down when we've aligned everything centrally vertically and centrally horizontally? It's because the, the heart will be taller than it is wider. And also when it sets it, sets, it always does it with a heart, it sets it slightly higher up. So we just have to nudge it down. And I've worked out how many spaces you need to nudge it down so that all the shapes overlap at some point. So if I just zoom in and show you, we've got the kind of rounded one at the back. Then we've got almost like the shield one. Then we've got the circle and then we've got the heart. And it looks like spaghetti junction at the minute, but when we weld it, it'll be fine. So we're going to press OK. And the, the only way you're going to find out if anything works is by trying it. So spend an evening on Canvas Workspace and just play. So a multiple selecting everything on the mat. Now that we've tapped that down and we're going to weld. So object, edit and weld. And now we've got the shape. And you never know what you're going to get. It's brilliant. It is just brilliant because it's like when you put a stencil down and you put paste through it and paint on it and you spread all this stuff over it and you've got this thing that looks an absolute mess and then you lift the stencil off and it looks amazing. It's that kind of feeling. And until you try it, you'll never know. But you need every part to be overlapped. So you can see now we've got the rounded shape here. We've got the label shape or the shield, more like the shield shape here. We've got the circle around there, and then we've got the heart in the middle there. Okay, so just have a play around because it's super cool. I, I will lose, literally lose evenings doing stuff like this because I love it. Right, we've done that bit, we've welded. Right, duplicate the shape so you have two and use the bottom option in the arrangement function. Okay, so we're going to press OK to weld. We're going to duplicate so we have two. Press OK and it says use the bottom option in the arrangement function. So arrangement function and bottom option. And now I have two side by side. Use the directional arrows to move the right hand shape over four or eight spaces to the left. So directional arrows. Oh, edit directional arrows. Four or eight. So because I'm working on SDX, I want eight. Okay, and I've got my two overlapped. Multiple select everything on the mat and weld. So, okay, multiple select everything on the mat, press okay and weld. Right, so I've now got a set of two. So I'm now going to repeat that until you have a row of four. So duplicate, so you have two. Use the bottom arrangement function to put them in a straight line. Press OK, edit, directional arrow buttons, move it across eight spaces. Multiple select, everything on the mat, press OK, 
go to Object, Edit and Weld that. OK, so we've now got a row of four. So now what we want to do is duplicate the row and use the bottom option in the arrangement function. So we're doing exactly the same thing again. OK, so let me just get down to my right instruction. So two. Press OK. Now this time, because it can't fit them side by side, the bottom option will put it underneath. This is super exciting. Right, so we're then going to move the bottom one up eight spaces, okay? And we're going to weld those. So select everything on the mat and weld. There we go. Now we want two more. So we want a row of four by four. So again, use the arrangement function because then we know that the spacing works perfectly. We're going to edit and use our direct arrow buttons and move it up eight. Press OK and then weld that together. There we go. Then we've got, oh, I was thinking about it, our pattern. It's, I always think it's thinking, shall I do it or shall I just not make her work harder? <laughs> but it did. Right, so end up with a square of four by four shapes. Send into canvas workspace. Okay, now that would be just a lovely cutting file as it is, wouldn't it? But you, we can do other stuff with it. So we're going to save it into the cloud and press OK. Right, let's go into here. Let's save those as a project because we can. And then let's delete them off. Four very unassuming shapes become something really pretty. So my projects refresh. And there is my file. Right, so I've now got my stencil design, my mask, my embossing file, my drawing file, my foiling file, my cutting file. You can resize it, all sorts of different things, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So recall the file and divide. All right, move the original file and group the waste pieces. So let's go to edit and divide. thinking about it that's why that blue and black bar is going right across the top and it does take a little while for this one to think about it so don't get scared and think oh it's not going to do it it will just be patient because I'm just like that and this shape tessellates so if you wanted to do really big pieces you could put that one on the side of here you're restricted by your mat but if you cut them out separately you can absolutely do that right so let's grab this outside edge and move this out of the way so this one will cut out, this one will cut in, okay? So we've got all those pieces there. So let's drag a box around all that. We're going to go to edit and we're going to group it. So I've now got the waist and I've got the outside edge. Right, let's move the waist out of the way for now. Let's pop that over there. And let's bring this back in. So what I want now is a mat layer for this to sit on. Now, because we've divided it, it's one shape now. So the only thing it's going to see is the outside edge when it comes to create an offset line, because all this is cut out of it. it all this doesn't exist as separate shapes anymore because it's done that and it's got rid of them. So we need to create a three millimeter outward offset line in canvas workspace. So select the complete shape. So edit three millimeter. So offset three millimeter outward and press OK. And now I've got a layer that's around the outside edge. So I've now got my card blank shape there. OK. Right, edit and select all and align centrally vertically, centrally horizontally and group. So we're going to bring all of these back in. So we're just going to drag a box around all three. Go to edit, align centrally vertically, 
centrally, horizontally, and group together. So you can see here I've got three layers because there's three blue lines there. So we've got three layers. We're going to group it. And we're going to resize it to 177.5. I know that sounds really specific, but it is. It, it just is because the outside edge is 177.5 because we've created an offset line on another shape and we need to make sure that it all works together when we're done. So we're going to go to properties and we're going to click on size and angle and we're also going to make sure that the maintain aspect ratio box is ticked. We need to make sure it's ticked for this one. So I'm going to backspace and do 177.5. And then because it's symmetrical I don't know, or square, I don't need to change the width. So the first box is always the height, the second box is always the width, unless you've rotated a shape. And then it does whatever it wants to do. So now we're going to edit and ungroup. And we've got our three layers now. So I'm the outer edge, so click on left click. We've got the outer edge, we've got the main detail and we've got our waist, okay? Ungroup, move the outer edge and complete design, ungroup the waist and save. So I'm gonna move that over there and I'm gonna ungroup this waist and there's a reason for that because we're gonna use it later on. So we're gonna ungroup that tap the screen and let's just save it as a project. Now the good thing is when you're saving a project in Canvas Workspace, these bits don't need to be on the same mat, on this mat. They can be off the side. It's only when you come to download them so the machine knows whether it can fit them that, you, that it, it asks you to do that. So I'm just gonna go Project Plus and it's now saved that project. So then, ungroup the, oh, the waist and save and then delete the waist. So we're going to drag a box all the way around there now because we don't need that anymore. And we are going to, see I'm tempted now to show you something else. Right, I'm going to show you. So if you just dragged this arrow over here and dropped it down over that triangle at the top, you can delete that bit. Then you can come up from the bottom as well and you can delete that bit, then you've got a border that will cut into your cardstock. So that would be really nice too. So don't just think, oh, I can only do this. You can delete this off, for example, look, and just have four like that. And these will cut into your cardstock. So just have a play around with that because it's super cool. Right, let's get rid of the rest because I'm getting distracted and I shouldn't do. Right. Oh, and my screen's gone to sleep now. That's telling me off you see for getting distracted. Right, let's move this. So, okay. Duplicate the outer edge and resize to 86 millimeters. So we're going to duplicate that. Move one out of the way. And we are going to resize that. So properties to 86 millimeters. Okay, so we're gonna, oh, bear with. There we go, backspace that. 86.0. And then when you close, it won't do anything until you close it. When you close it, it'll then resize it down for you, okay? Select the detail design. Oh, you're gonna duplicate this, sorry. Bear with, so edit and duplicate so you've got two of those right let's move that out of the way so we need to select the detail design which is this one like that and one of the resize square shapes which is this and align them centrally vertically and centrally horizontally so we're going to align that centrally vertically, centrally horizontally. Now, the reason that it's 86 wide is because this is 172. So I divided it by four to find out how much each of these rows were. And then I doubled it, which happens to be 43. And then I doubled it to make 86 so that I know that when I put it in the center, it's 
absolutely categorically going to be over those four and it's going to be perfectly aligned okay so select the detail design i want the reset align centrally vertically and centrally horizontally and weld so we're going to go to edit i'm going to weld it because i can because i've divided that original detail pattern so now it's going to put that in the middle of there so now we have a frame but we have a piece in the middle so if you wanted to put your sentiment directly on there you could and I love the fact that it keeps these little triangles here because it just adds that extra little bit of detail into there but we're going to change it so select the second resized square shape and create a three millimeter inward offset line and delete the original so let's do it up here so let's go to edit offset three millimeters there with inward delete the original and press ok so we now have our piece here select the detail design and the inward offset shape and align centrally vertically centrally horizontally and divide right so let's roughly position that and let's select that edit align it edit and align it horizontally so now what it sees is a frame with a solid middle and a piece sat on top of it so what we need to do is divide it so edit and divide and that will punch that piece that we've just put in out of there now I'm going to keep that okay because later on we're going to oh, everything's getting in the way of everything now on my table it doesn't matter how big a table I get still have lots of stuff right so we're going to save that project so i'm going to go project plus i'm going to get rid of that because i don't need it i'm going to bring back that back in over the mat and i'm going to download this project scan and cut transfer right recall the file and save Okay, so I'm going to save this one for a start because that's a nice pattern that's different now to the one that we've got. And then I'm going to retrieve from the cloud. I'm going to have to think about it for a minute. There we go. And I'm going to save that straight onto the USB. Okay, so then we are, we've done that bit. Delete the detailed design. So edit remember because we've got two layers delete the detail design and you're going to cut three of these out of craft card all right or whatever card you're using for your card base so you're going to cut three of the outer edge from the card of your choice okay I'm going to save this now as a separate file as well so I'm going to save that onto the USB as a new file recall the saved detail file so home Retrieve USB. Go down to the bottom. Click on this. Remember there was an outside edge to it as well. So we're going to get rid of the outside edge. And you're going to cut four of those from white. Okay. So it'll only fit one on the mat at once. So just do four out of white card. And then you're going to glue one of the white detailed layers to one of your craft layers, all right? So basically what you're doing is you're gluing a white one onto here and a white one onto here, okay? In the middle. And I know you've cut four, but there's a reason why. So it says repeat. You now have two choices. I'm gonna read it off here because this is how I've written it. You can either re retrieve the file of all the waste pieces that you saved or you can cut a full panel in each colour that you're going to use to paper piece in. So you can either cut the whole thing again out of teal, green, yellow, pink, which are the colours that I've chosen or whatever colours you choose, or you can, you, you can use the waste bits to just cut the pieces that you need. It's entirely up to you which you prefer. Okay, if you're going to cut these out of different colours, you're going to make more cards as you go along. 
so it's up to you whether you decide to do that or whether you do it the way that I did it which is the bit that I'm going to show you now so either move the pieces that you want to cut from one of the colors you are using from the waist design group one set together and then duplicate it 12 times and cut right so let's do that bit let me show you what I mean by that so I'm going back into canvas workspace I'm just going to get rid of that file and I'm going to refresh my projects and I'm going to bring the one in that has the waste on it. I'm going to get rid of these two because they're the bits that we don't need at this moment in time. And for example, you could just take the heart and you could download that and you would cut 24 of those and paper piece one pink heart back into all the open areas okay so the way that I did mine I did mine this way because it's saved card and I wasn't going to make lots and lots of the same card so I've got my white one stuck onto my craft I then put a little bit of glue into the aperture and then stick the piece on top rather than putting glue on the underside of that I'm risking it splurging out everywhere so just put it on the craft bit that you're seeing through here before the pink hearts are put in and drop those in place okay then when I've done that bit I selected that and that and I went to the painstaking well it's not painstaking I went to the trouble of doing it like this and using those four pieces because then I know that they're going to fit back in per perfectly because they're the bits that have come out so instead of just having one and duplicating it and flipping it I just was over cautious probably but it's the way my brain works and I did that then I grouped that so edit and grouped it together so I know that it's going to stay in the same place and then I downloaded that bit and I cut 12, 12, not 12, 24 of those and I put those back into the places where they belonged. The only bits that I didn't do were these little teeny tiny bits here because by the time I'd done that, by the time I cut it, there wasn't enough space to get it back in really. So then I did this one and this one and this one like that and I grouped that together and then I did 24 of those and then finally I did that one that one that one because to be fair the machine's going to do all the bad, all the bad bit for you which is cutting it all out so you might as well just spend the time being making it as good as possible right so group that and then downloaded that and then these bits that are, le are left behind look but what you could do so once you've done all that what you could do is you could start to so if I undo all that now because you've seen it this is why I love the undo button because look how it just puts it all back in place <laughs> is you could just take away all the hearts and you could then cut that into your into your cardstock so there's a heart shape there but it then doesn't create an aperture you can tell it's a heart because you've created an inward offset line at some point at the beginning so you could get rid of all those you can't just drag across them all because there's other shapes around them like that and then you've got another design or you could then put the heart back in so you could undo look at that <laughs> there's something very 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 therapeutic about that I have to say sorry that's a child in me coming out but you could then take away and I'll just do this top section here you could then take away these pieces like this and that creates a different layer so have a play around with the shapes you know don't just do what I've done have a really good play around the waist is is almost as valuable 
as the bits that you oh hello that you um leave behind let me just undo that then i can actually see what that was right okay that was a bit that i didn't want to get rid of so just have a play around and see what you come up with because it is really really good fun and you can come up with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different pieces just from one pattern and all that started off as one as four basic shapes so it really is incredible where you can take it right so let's get back to our card so paper piece the pieces into the to the white panel so you've got your craft card you've got your white piece on top and you're going to put all your pieces inside the design and you're going to do that on both panels so this one and this one okay so you've got your two panels then glue the two remaining white panels over the top of the paper piece to panel so this is where you're neatening up your work and it does make a big difference it makes it look like you've inlaid it more because you've got another tier of card so once you're happy i used um a spray glue just because i found it easier to cover the whole thing because you do want that adhesion but you could do it with the pva if you're patient enough and then place that over the top and now it looks like the colors are inlaid into it they're not just sat flush there inside it looks like you spend hours and hours and hours and actually the paper piecing bit is really quite therapeutic if you're looking at this and going absolutely not in a million years am i ever 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 going to do that it would drive me bonkers you have an alternative and i've just thought of this now so if we go back into now let's go where do we need to go back into let's get rid of that waste and i don't think i can ungroup this yet so let's have a look edit right so it's not going to allow me to ungroup this because i've already divided it however if you download that pattern to the machine and i press home and i retrieve it from the cloud and I save it back into the cloud straight away so I haven't done anything with it I'm hoping that then it will do what I think it's going to do and allow me to ungroup it so edit and ungroup and it has look so now I've got an outside edge now if you you're looking at it and going no way no way no way no way am I ever going to do that you could draw this onto a piece of white card or you could get rid of the outside edge group that together and group create a three millimeter outward offset line which is what we use to create the card base so a three millimeter outward offset line and delete the original and then you can align these two and you can draw it directly onto your craft card and color it in with colored pencils because colored pencils on craft card looks lovely or you could decide to do your card blank in white card and draw it on there and color it in if you find that easier absolutely go for it maybe you just want to draw the whole thing on white and make your card out of that it's up to you but that is how you can then start to be really versatile and create lots of different looks if, if you're not the person that wants to sit there and for a, an hour or so and just paper piece all these bits back in it's up to you personally i love that i love that bit it's just it's a switch off from all the designing and all the numbers and thinking about shapes and how they work just sticking paper together because I, I love that bit so entirely up to you what you prefer right then you're going to score so you've got your first panel here with your decorative panel on you've got your second one now this you have a third piece of your craft so you're going to score it down the middle so if I open it out scored it along there and I've also scored it about an inch down from the bottom so I worked it out so that if I lift this up you'll be able to see it there I came down to where this little bit comes out here 
So you've got a little strut that sticks out there. So from the top of that, right the way across in a straight line and scored that. You're then gonna put glue underneath there and you're gonna stick that on top of this panel. And then this one will fold in half like that and your second panel sticks onto the bottom half of this. So then you've got your easel card like that, okay? Super simple. Most of you will have made an easel before, if not all of you. So that's how you're going to do that. Right, so the next bit is, bear with. Right, let me have a look. Score, glue the top scored, glue the remaining decorative panel, send the detailed design that you saved earlier back into Can Canvas Workspace, delete the outside edge and ungroup. Okay, so we are going to get rid of that. Now, this is the panel that it's talking about, okay? So, because I saved this project earlier, so my instructions, when I did my instructions, I forgot, I forgot to save this bit of the file. But because I've just done that now, I don't need to do this next bit. So all I'm gonna do is get rid of that, put that in the bin and get rid of that and put that in the bin. And if you've forgotten to do it like I forgot, the written instructions will tell you what to do. So what I'm going to do now is, let me have a look. Uh, bear with me a minute while I just read these. Right, create a three millimeter inward offset line. So this was the piece that we saved. So let me come back to the overhead. That shape that's on there right now, is this bit here. So it's that inside shape that we use to punch through the solid. What we need to create is this, okay? So we're going to create a three millimeter inward offset line. And the reason we're using three millimeters is we've used three millimeters as an offset line for this, three millimeters for this, three millimeters for this, so we're keeping it going. We're keeping that same thickness of line all the way through the project, which really gives it a professional finish. And it's little things like that. If you, I mean, you can do it differently and it gives you a different look. So if you had a one millimeter, so a really thin heart, and then a thinner, a, a normal three millimeter circle, and then a wider one of this, it would look completely different. So have a play with the thicknesses, but if you want something that you look at and you don't think, oh, is that quite right? Keep everything the same measurement. So we're going to create a three millimeter inward offset line and we're going to delete the original. Okay. So now we've got that. So let's edit and duplicate it here. So select it, edit and duplicate it. So we've got two and then we're going to download that. We're going to scan and cut transfer that. And then we might as well save that file as well. Oh, look at that. Sorry, I'm looking, I'm doing, <laughs> okay. This is when I get lost in Canvas because I'm going, oh, that would make something else. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that would make something else, but not right now. Well, it would because it would make a frame. Mm, no, not now, Melanie, not now. Come on, focus. That could be another USB. Right, so um, we're going to cut two of those out of white and you're going to stick one inside there and you're going to stick one inside there. Okay, so you've then got all your actual card completed. Now we need a, a stopper and I thought a, heart, a, a bow would be lovely and it's the same bow that we used on the birdhouse. So I will go through the instructions again just because it's quite a quick one to do but it's also on the birdhouse as well. All right, so create the bows. So let's put that in the bin, don't need that. I'm gonna retrieve that data from the cloud just before we move on to the bows so that I know that you've done it too and you've saved it because then you've got your two pieces there. So let's save that onto the USB so we've got all the parts that we need if we want to make it again. Right, so for the bow, we are going to select BAA059. Okay, so we've got the oval. We're going to unlock the aspect ratio and make it 25 millimeters high by 75 wide. 
So it's three times as wide as it is high, which is always nice as well because it keeps it in a nice, a nice ratio as well. So I do think about things like that. And the 25 millimeters means that it's going to be, the pink bit's going to be an inch high. And then we've got an offset light layer to go on there. So it's nice just to keep things like that. Type two into the duplicate number or slash number box and set them on the mat. So two and set. Okay. Use the directional arrows button to move the right hand oval six spaces to the left, three spaces on a CM machine. So we want the right oval, we want to go edit. Let me just read that again. Use the direction arrow to move the right hand oval six spaces to the left. That should be six spaces to the right, not to the left. Just so that you know, because I want to move it further away, not closer together. Okay. So, directional arrows, Melanie. One, two, three, four, five, six. And press OK. All right, so six spaces to the right. And then you're going to group the two together. So multiple select, everything on the mat, press OK, go to Object, Edit and Group. And move that out of the way, because you would do on a CM machine. Unlock BAA001, so select, add the square. Uh, unlock the aspect ratio and resize to six millimeters high by 175 millimeters wide. Oh, I still haven't got used to the speed that that number changes on the scan, the uh, SDX. I'm going to set it on the mat. Then we're going to edit, multiple select, everything that's on the mat and press OK. Use your alignment function to align it centrally vertically, centrally horizontally and weld and now you've got your tab on the left your left hand side bow a tab in the middle for the tab on the left and right to stick to another oval and then your other tab then we're going to create an offset line because i wanted to bring the white so i wanted the pink because the pink if i just bring this back in because the pink is probably the most prominent color on there because it's the hearts and it's in the middle of each shape. So it's framed by the rest of it. It will stand out more. So I wanted to do, tie that in with the pink for the bow. And I've also tied it in with the pink on the sentiment as well. Okay. So we're going to create. Now I'm going to send it back into Canvas Workspace. If you've got an SDX, all you need to do is this. So let me do that again because I did it far too quickly. Go to your offset. Click that up to three millimeters, press OK, move the original out of the way and that's your offset layer. So you'll then do three offset layers out of card. Use the card that you have, um, the white card, if that's what you've used, and then three of the pink. And you can use your arrangement function. Oh, I want to show you this actually, because this is quite cool. Right, so if I've got, I've got my craft and my pink on there. You're thinking, right, well, I'm going to have to save that, delete off the pink ones, cut the craft ones, recall it, get rid of the craft ones, cut the pink ones. Well, actually, if you do this, so if you go into your spanner and your cut area and you drag up like that, so all that's on, all that it can see on your mat, oh, bear with, I need to do more than that. I need to drag it up further up than that. See if we're about right there. Yeah. When I ask it to now cut this, it'll say there is a pattern out of the effective area. The pattern cannot be cut or drawn. Are you okay to continue? And you press okay. And now it will just cut the craft ones. And then when you've done the craft ones, you go back in and you change the cut area back to there and you drop this bit down and then it will just cut up, not, not quite as far. Let me drag that back up again, like that. And then it will just cut the pink ones. So watch. <laughs> Clever that, isn't it? 
I do like that. I like the fact that it does that. I think that's really clever. Oh, let me just go back in because I'm just pressing random buttons now and just take that back up. Okay. If you're going to do that in canvas, so let's get the original one and get rid of these. A multiple select part of the mat, drag over the one that you want to keep, and put the rest in the bin. You're going to send it into canvas workspace, so we're going to save. You're going to go back into canvas and into my projects and refresh. There's your bow. And then you're just going to go edit, offset, three millimeter, outward, and OK. And then you've got your bow. Now, I deleted the original. Look at this. Ready? Ta-da! It's back. I love it. So don't delete the original one on this one. Thank goodness for offset. So outward. Leave the original as it is and press OK. And then you've got your original bow and you've got your matte layer and you'll download those, duplicate it so you've got three of each and cut them out. OK, so then to do your bows, you will have this long bow. You're going to use, I use this to be honest, I use my stylus and you're just going to put it underneath the ovals and you're just going to stretch that oval so it starts to curve because what you don't want to do is just fold it over and glue it because it'll crease. So give it a really, really nice curve. And then the tab that is here is going to go behind that curve and stick to the back of the center there. And then this bit here is going to curve backwards and stick to the back of the center there. That's when your reverse tweezers come in really well, really handy because you can hold that in place while it dries and you do that with both of them. Okay, so that's simple enough. Now we're going to make the little hearts that go in the middle of each of the pink hearts. So you can save that. And then we can press home. So we want the heart again, same heart as we had before. So BAA067, which are there. We're going to resize it to 10 millimeters. Okay, 10 millimeters. There we go. We're going to set it on the mat. We want uh, 24. So edit. Duplicate, no, we don't want 24, 25, 26. So ask it to do 26. And it puts them all in a line like that, and you're like, yeah, you're kidding me, right? No, I'm not kidding you. We're going to do this. So like that. So like that, puts them all in a row. Now my pattern interval is still on, and my pattern interval's on one, I'm all right. Now what's really interesting is that there's 26 there. So if I just do this, I'm gonna get rid of that one as well. So I've got a straight row. Now on the CM300 and CM600, it will read 300 paths. So I could ask it to do 300 hearts. Then if I ask it to do another one on the same mat, it'll tell me that it won't fit. But as soon as you group it together, it's one. Then you can duplicate it. So for the CM300 and 600 users, which is the machine that reads the least amount of paths, it's still a lot. And we always check our USB. So we check every file, especially the Tatalay's USBs. We check every file and make sure it opens on the lower spec machine. So that we say lower spec, it just means it means read reads less lines or fewer shapes but it's never restricted me in any way shape or form so it means that you can group that together and then duplicate it out but, but we always check because if it won't open it might every file might open on an SDX 1200 that reads 900 lines but that doesn't matter if you've got a CM300 or 600 so we always check them on the lower spec machines but that's how if you wanted to do big numbers because maybe it would only take up to, say, there to do 300 tiny hearts. Well, you're thinking, well, I've got, I, it will fit. It will fit, but it won't allow you because it's the maximum amount that it can read. So you group that so it sees it as one, and then you duplicate it and you put it underneath. So that's just another little top tip for you. 
Right, so you're then going to cut those hearts and you're going to stick one in the middle of the bows like that. And I chose the craft because it's bringing it from the outside to the inside and again from the outside to the inside. So what we need to do now is this with love and hugs, okay? So home, retrieve data. No, not retrieve data, Melanie. Right, breathe. Just stop for a minute. This is what I do all the time. Right, so we're going to um, select font number two. Okay, and we're going to type the words with and set that on the mat. We're going to add, go back into pattern and back into the font. And you can mix your fonts up if you want, love. And I'm doing them as separate words because I'm going to want to move them. Add, pattern, hugs. And a really good thing, so if you're sending somebody more love than hugs or more hugs than love, make one word bigger. Because that will become the most prominent and therefore the most obvious and the most important. So I'm now going to add, and the last thing I'm going to add from the same font is the and symbol. So if I click on there and click on there, it is there. Okay, so I've now got all my words that I need and my and. Resize the words to 10 millimeters high. So I am going to do it this way. So I'm gonna edit, multiple select, everything on the mat and align them centrally vertically centrally horizontally now that's not going to work that's why i haven't written it like that in your instructions melanie just do what your instructions tell you to do okay just do it change each one each one to 10 millimeters okay so it's just as easy to do this and they are quite small but that's okay because we've got a zoom button so we're all right we can see it and then hooks to 10. Right, then it tells me to add a square to your mat. So we're going to add pattern square. We're going to make that 50 millimeters, I believe. Yep, so I resize that down. So that was the space that I had in the center of my front panel for a sentiment to allow me to also have some mats and layers and for you still to see, be able to see this white panel. Right, so I've got the square and I've also got my words. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just position this here with love very roughly and, and hugs like that. So I'm gonna cut, I'm just gonna deal with this bit first. So I'm going to go to edit and zoom in and I've done them quite close together. So I'm going to move the love up first. So I'm not worrying about getting it perfectly, perfectly aligned yet. I'm just looking at the spacing in between. So I've got with love, and then I can move that and up like that. And then the hooks, I'm gonna move across a little bit. And I actually moved the and over a little bit as well because I thought it looked quite nice just slotted in between the O and the V. Now that's gonna go skyways when I align everything, but just for now, I like to do it this way. I like to just position thinking about where I want things to be. So I'm looking at the gaps here, here, and here. So now when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna multiple select part of the mat. I'm gonna drag over that square and I'm going to align everything centrally vertically okay and then I'm going to go back into my zoom like that I'm going to tap my screen I'm going to nudge that and over a little bit more because I quite liked it slightly offset and then I'm going to group that together so multiple select everything on the mat you can tap the screen so let me just show you that again so if you've got more than one shape and you select everything instead of selecting part of the map by accident, 
So multiple select everything on the mat. You can then tap on the shape and on the shape that you want to remove from that process and it will get rid of it. And then object edit and group. And then that is 41 by 42. Now that really, that, I can't do that. So, so I'm going to separate the height and the width and I'm going to make it 42 by 42 just because it's square and it's going in a square. You wouldn't notice any difference, but in my head, I can't do it. So we are going to multiple select everything on the mat and align it centrally vertically, centrally horizontally. And then we're going to save that into Canvas Workspace, okay? Okay, let's go to Canvas Workspace. So let's get rid of these bows and let's go to my projects. There we go. Right, so I've got the outside square. If I send that to the back, I've also then got, I didn't give it long enough to go to the back. So edit and send it to the back. And then into the words. Okay, so let's do this. So we're going to go to properties and we're going to set this as a drawing only line. So right now it's set. If I ask it to cut it, it'll cut it. If I ask it to draw it, it'll draw it. But here you can separate those. So I'm going to ask it to just draw, set, set the um, font as a drawing only line. And then when I click on the square, I can set that as a cutting only line. And even though I then group all that together, let me think about that, will it work? Um, don't, I don't know, let's try it. Let's see if it works, but if we group it and then we send it down, let's see if it works. I've never tried it. Let's try it, see if it does it. Might not, might want it as two separate pieces. But you know what, we'll save this just in case, <laughs> just in case it doesn't work. And I'd actually grouped, no, no, I hadn't grouped it. Right, so we're all right. So let's, let's press home, retrieve, go to the cloud. And let's see what happens. Oh, looks like it will. So if I now ask it to draw, it will just draw the letters, even though I've sent it down as a grouped file. So that's excellent. If I ask it to cut, it will just cut the square. And that's the easiest way. So yes, it takes a few more seconds to go into canvas and set them as different lines. So you're drawing your, your words as a drawing only and your outside as a cutting only, but it makes it so much easier when you get to this stage. So much easier. Right, so I've now got my square from my cut, haven't I? So I'm going to go back. I'm going to use that square. I can't use that square because it was grouped when I downloaded it. So that's interesting. Right, so let's just forget that. And let's make a new square. So a new square, which is going to be this yellow layer here. We are going to make um, 56 centimetres. So again, we're sticking with that three millimetre because we did 50 millimetres for the outside of the um, sentiment, the sentiment mat. So three, three mil here, three mil here, and there, and there means that I need 56 inch square. Then I'm going to duplicate that. So edit and duplicate it. And I'm going to do one up 59. So one and a half. So I'm going to resize that to 59. So even the one and a half is half of three. So I'm still, even though the pink is narrower, I'm still sticking with something that's relevant to three. And the reason that I didn't do another three is because you would have lost a lot of this white here and I wanted to keep that and it works. It looks really, really nice, okay? So once you draw your file, you cut it out. I then went in with an alcohol marker or a fine liner and colored it in. 
and then you mat and layer it and that is your project done and that my friends is sent from me to you with love and hugs if you want to see more from highlight crafts make sure you click the like button subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.